Hassan Longstreet, the four-star quarterback, is committing here in the next few days. Texas a has got a pretty good shot at this, kid. You are Locked On Aggies, your daily podcast on the Texas A&M Aggies, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome on in to Locked on Aggies. I'm your host, Andrew Stefaniak. Thanks for making Locked on Aggies your first listen every single day. We're going to talk a little bit of recruiting today. So, hey, when we're talking recruiting, we're talking LinkedIn because there's no better place to go recruit for your small or large business than LinkedIn. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. So when we're talking recruiting, we're talking with Brian Smith. Brian. How you doing, buddy? Doing well, sir. How about yourself? Pretty good. I, I, I'm excited to get to talk a little quarterback because, you know, nothing anybody loves more than a little quarterback conversation. So, I mean, this Longstreet kid, it's been an interesting, interesting recruitment tracking this one for a few weeks. And I know you're right in the middle of it because <laughs> he's got some Auburn interest and you do a lot oh, of work yeah. on the Auburn side. Um, so before we get into, you know, what's this recruitment going to come down to? First of all, he will be committing on um, the 14th. Yeah, he's got a couple of crystal balls at uh, 14th of April, so here in a few days, three, three days. Sure. A uh, couple of crystal balls in favor of the Aggies. Uh, he's ranked 44th in the composite rankings, so, I mean, this is a legit top 50 dude. So, Brian, I mean, before we get into the where's he going type of conversation, what do you think about Longstreet as a player? Well, first off, he is from Centennial High School in Corona, which is just outside of Los Angeles, and it is arguably – over the last, say, 10 years, the best program in the United States at producing passing offenses that are a pain in the butt yeah. to defend, quarterbacks that go on to the next level, et cetera. To put it in perspective, one of my buddies works at IMG, obviously best program in the country just talent-wise. He said they're the hardest team for them to prepare for because their passing game is so elite and finds holes. He said you can't keep up with them. They go fast. They'll do different things to get matchups. It is like an NFL offense at the high school level. So – Longstreet's going to come into the college game more advanced, and he showed it with passes over the middle, level two balls, like just over the linebacker, just in front of the safety. Most of those passes, even NFL quarterback coaches prefer their guys don't make because they go the other direction. Mm. Longstreet can make them. He's got the arm talent. He can do it on the move, and he's good. If you don't pay attention to him, zoom, zoom, he'll run by guys too. He is the kind of player that could end up as a Heisman Trophy winner in terms of his raw talent. Like he is the real deal. And he's also advanced. Like he's one of the highest four quarterbacks you're going to see in recent memory because of all the intangibles and the coaching that he's received. AM's quarterback room would get a heck of a lot better if he ended up joining the Aggies. Yeah. And looking at a kid, I mean, it does. Some folks might go, well, talent, talent. I'm taking a kid playing at one of the best high schools in oh, it matters. the United States <laughs> over some dude, you know, in Idaho. You know what I mean? No like, offense, but that matters, man. He knows yeah. what it's like to have a 280-pound man run at him and try to decapitate him. Yeah. He's playing yeah. in L.A. Like, they're dudes. So, yeah. It matters. We see talent come out of L.A., out of California as a whole. I mean, a, a top talent every year. California has the most NFL players, right? Isn't that a fact? Uh, they might right now, but it's top three. Yeah. It, it, it depends on the year. But their like, quarterback history is off the charts. Exactly. So, you know – you love to hear it's a quarterback, and, and and that stuff does matter. Knowing, hey, this is a guy that's playing at a high school that develops elite quarterbacks and helps players get an understanding. You know, playing quarterback is not easy. It, the intangibles that go into it are are crazy, and it's one of those things. If you've never done it, you don't understand what goes into it. So, knowing that a kid like Longstreet has that, hey, I've played at this high school that develops quarterbacks and really puts together an offense that is is uh uh struggle for other teams to get ready for that matters because that's going to help you in college. Like you said, so that's exciting. Um, long streets, a player that I think Texas and fans are, are, are just drooling over the thought of him committing here in a few days. But so I guess my question, and you alluded to it a little bit, but I heard he was a guy who uses his legs. Well, watch the tape. It doesn't lie to you. So my question for you, Brian, is this as a guy who you talk about, he can make these elite high, NFL quarterback throws these high level competitive throws, but he's got those legs on top of him. I looked at him more of a as a 
as a running quarterback and he can sling it a little bit. So you're saying he's a legit dude with his arm and he can run the football. Passer first. Really? 100%. I don't know. I, I read something on him that talked about, then I read something that wasn't true because I've watched the tape too. And I thought like, okay, he uses his legs, but he's a great thrower of the football. So that's, that's interesting because yeah, I read somebody was talking about, he's a, not necessarily he's a run first guy, but he's a guy who's super athletic and can use his legs. Um, but that's great to hear. I mean, I, you know, I, these running quarterbacks, they just, especially with Texas A&M's history of quarterbacks getting hurt, like every second of every year. And <laughs> it, it's a terrible trend they have. Really yeah. Is. You can almost bet that a running quarterback is not going to last 12 football games. So I don't hate that. So, I mean, I guess when it comes to long streets recruitment, he is, I mean, it seems like he's in love with Auburn a little bit, which is weird. I mean, I don't, does Auburn get a ton of California kids? That's far away. I don't know much about that. But I mean, you know, you're down there. What, what is the vibe with Auburn, the Auburn camp about Longstreet? Up until a few days ago, most of the people around here thought that Longstreet would sign with Auburn. Now, these recruitments, in full disclosure, tend to be back and forth. We are dealing with somebody that's not old enough to vote. Yeah. So, Keep that in mind. Two, it is April. If he mm -hmm. decides on April 14th, as planned, and by all indications he will, it means diddly. If you think somebody like you, Freeze, who actually likes recruiting and is a very easy guy to get to know, he, he's great with us in the Auburn media, he's going to keep going after this kid. Yeah. This is their guy. So he fits the offense because, like, they are super RPO heavy. Mm -hmm. And the things that he does – that's what they want. Like he is carbon copy of what Auburn is looking for. So yeah, this is a guy that Auburn fans would love to see. And you freeze would probably like even more. They're, they're not going to stop coming after him, but that was the vibe until a few days ago. Then all of a sudden it was AM. So I don't yeah. know if this is NIL or if it's this closer, or maybe it's a coach on the staff at AM. There's so many variables here. This will probably take a while to truly play out. Yeah. It, it, I get that vibe too. Cause I mean, it, it seemed like, to me, from what I'm hearing here, it seemed like even when Auburn was making that push, and it sounds like the Auburn folks were confident, AM folks were never not confident. So, and, and was that a little obviously, it, it looks like this guy's going to end up at AM, but it, you know, it seemed like for a while. But that's the point you make is a good one. Hugh Freeze won't stop. We've seen that with Cam Coleman. Now, of course, Jimbo got let go, which, which changed, but still, like, he, he's not going to stop. We've seen Hugh Freeze do that in the recruiting trail a lot. And so I think you got to hold on to this kid. And that's going to be important for this coaching staff. Listen, once he commits, we don't, okay, well, we'll see you here in a few months when you're on campus. No, you got to, you got to keep recruiting this kid till he has signed that piece of paper because these 16 year olds, 17 year olds, 18 year olds, whatever, however, they're old, however old they are, they're, you know, they're, they're going to be easily persuaded to make different moves. So I, I think that keep recruiting them is going to be key. Um, and then, I mean, uh, yeah, Brian, I mean, I, I, I won't, I won't put you on the spot, but I, I just feel like this kid's going to pick Texas A&M. But like you said, the key is going to be, don't let him, don't take the foot off the gas. Keep going after him because you know, Hugh Freeze wants him. He does seem to fit the system there at Auburn pretty well. Um, but I want to ask you this. I think that I want to ask you how much this plays into recruiting. So the other day, coach Elko went up on the podium and told the media, Hey, you know, what I love about Colin Klein is he has his offense. He has what he likes, but he's going, we're going to recruit and he's going to build his offense around what we got. He's not going to be one of those guys. I run this. We're going to recruit around this. They're going to recruit the best players possible. And then he's going to make an offense around that. What are your thoughts on that? Like when it comes to a recruiting battle like this? It sounds great. It's a lot, yeah. of, a lot easier in a game like basketball than it is yeah. football, though. That's, That's the bad. thing. Like, yeah. There's only so much you can do. Um, the easiest example is Jaden Daniels. Mm -hmm. I'm sure AM fans are not very friendly with him based on his ability to torch everybody. But if you've got a guy like that, sometimes you just got to shut your pie hole and let it happen because he did everything wrong and it worked. Yeah. Longstreet is very similar. Ironically, they're both LA kids mm -hmm. in that he's just really accurate can throw the deep ball and do all those things. But when everything goes wrong is when he scores because yeah. he makes two guys miss and he runs by five more. So yeah. 
I I don't know what Klein means by changing the offense, but I think this kid would fit any offense. Yeah, he would. He would. So I mean, if you really wanted to be like Jonathan Smith, who went from Oregon State to Michigan State, they're probably going to be more pro stuff. Longstreet could play in that. He yeah. just take off occasionally. But at the same time, if there's a game where you know, okay, we can't stop this team, we need to we need to roll here. He could just run RPO plays, play after play, go up tempo, and be in the run game and end up with 140 yards rushing. So. This, this is a kid, they're, they're going to be able to figure that out. They may have a quarterback somewhere down the line that's not as talented as him that they can fit it around, but Longstreet, he can do whatever the heck he wants. Klein's going to have an open box of candy here. Yeah. Uh, so he ain't got to worry about it. Good. Well, that's good to know because, like I said, I do feel like the Aggies end up landing this talented quarterback. So we're going to talk a little bit about a recent Texas A&M commit, and then we're going to talk about an offensive tackle who I think – it could pick Texas A&M the same day that Longstreet commits. So we'll talk about those two guys coming up right here on Locked on Aggies. But first, I want to tell you about our friends over at eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience. The formula for winning championships is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. Superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and a ton more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to make your car the MVP and bring home that win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible bottoms only. Exclusions apply. eBay Guaranteed Fit only available to U.S. customers. So, Brian, Texas A&M recently landed the commitment of four-star defensive lineman Landon Rink, a kid that you say you know about him. I, I, watching the film on him, he, what stands with me quickly is the athleticism. You know, I, he's been playing like tight end some, and he's six foot two, two hundred eighty pounds. Dude is a monster. So, what are your thoughts on him? What's Texas A&M getting in this kid? I saw him a couple years ago at the Under Armour camp in uh, the Dallas area. Hmm. And to be honest with you, I thought he was good, but I wasn't sure how good he was going to be because he was only going to go into his junior year that next year. Yeah, You did see how much he grew. The difference between him that last spring and then like this past fall is humongous. He took a lot of strength gains. I can tell he, he either had a trainer or did something to change his diet because he was a lot more explosive. Yeah. And now he's getting into guys quicker. He's initiating the contact. And yeah. even if he just wants to do a rip move and get by something very simple – He's able to do it. And again, he's playing against good competition because he's in the Houston area. He's playing in Texas and football in that state, obviously, is, is a big deal to everybody. I think he's a kid that can play pretty early at AM. Uh, I didn't see that when I originally saw him, but the junior film was really good. So and he plays 100 mile an hour, bro. Yeah. You get three techs that play 100 mile an hour like that. You got to scheme against them a little bit. They're going to create more tackles for loss. This is the kind of kid that I know this is before you were probably even born, but like the wrecking crew defense and stuff. This is yes. the kind of guy that would have fit in with that in the eighties and nineties. Yeah. I mean, it's just it, the speed for his size is what stood out. Oh to yeah. Me. He's quick. I mean, just, first there, was, there was one play where he, they had him playing tight end, which is funny because when I watched when he committed, I, I put the film on and I went, wait a minute, wait a minute. He's playing <laughs> tight end. <laughs> and he gets a pass. He goes out and he's like, Stride for stride, outrunning safeties. And once again, I no offense to Idaho. I don't know anybody from Idaho, but the, he's not playing in Idaho. <laughs> these are these are Texas high school safeties and corners, and he's outrunning them. This dude is 6'2", 280 pounds, yeah. and I'm watching this just jaw drop. It's like one in the morning, and I'm getting ready, to, and I'm just watching the film on this dude running away from safeties, going, "My goodness!" So it's a kid that you know. I mean, he. Uh, top 300 recruit in the class. Uh, you know He won't play tight end in Texas a and The reason I'm bringing it up is because it's so impressive that he's able to do that That's at right. his size, like that he's outrunning safeties and corners in Texas high school football at 6'2", 280 pounds. I mean, that is absurd. But, yeah, I'm excited about him. I think he's going to be a pretty good player. And I agree with you. I had the same take. I think you could see him on the field early and into his career. I think he's growing into his body. I think he's getting stronger. And I think that could lead to some sophomore, you know, redshirt freshman year playing time. So the next guy, Brian, I want to talk about is another kid committing on April 14th, like Longstreet. And that is the offensive tackle, 
Marcus Garcia, 6'5", 270 pounds from Denton, Texas. Um, you know, two crystal balls to Texas A&M, uh, ranked 326 in the composite rankings. I think the Aggies feel pretty good about where they stand on this one, but what are your thoughts on this kid? Well, I mean, athletic, mm -hmm. good footwork, has some power. Um, positionally, like, that's the thing, like, when, when you talk about linemen, when you talk about DBs, whatever, football has changed so much. It used to be I could just pigeonhole a kid for a spot, but the footwork is good. So is it inside? Is it outside? But he it plays hard all the time. I watched a bunch of his film. I just enjoyed it. Usually I can take five, 10 clips, pretty much no, but I think this is a young man that has some growth potential just based on the frame. Yeah. And I also think he could play on the interior outside. Either way, he's good to go. Um, this is the kind of player that you expect coming out of state, Texas. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like yeah. the effort level and the way he grinds, it just says Texas. You know what I mean? Like the, the, the prep programs there, they demand it. It's kind of like militaristic in terms of the mentality to a team. Uh, I just enjoyed watching this film. Yeah. No, I mean, I, I, I'm right there with you on, on his film, but I, I've now I've got a question because, I, and I think this is, folks will find this interesting. So, you know, when I played in high school, when you were playing football now it, and you would see a kid, a lot of times everybody's listed as a tackle. That's really good. Everybody that's going to be in a, in a SEC, a power five, um, which by the way, is power five even a statement anymore? No, it's power four. Yeah, I was going to say, I said that the other day. I'm like, is it even, it's not even powerful. Yeah, this is. Soon to be power three or power two is probably yeah. my guess. But I just feel like a lot of kids in high school, we see, oh, Texas A&M got a tackle. But then you watch the film and you go, I think this kid is going to play on the interior. I mean, do you see that a lot, Brian? A lot of kids that you watch the film, they're listed as tackles. They play tackle in high school because they're probably the best offensive lineman on their team. And then, but they, they project more as a guard at the next level. All the time. Uh, some yeah. some of the best coaches in football recruit as many tackles as they can, let the chips fall where they may, move a kid inside, and if he wants to transfer, the words are bye-bye. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. That's it. So yeah. a and able to get the athletes that they want, like Fasusi and some of the guys that are recruiting in the state of Texas. Yeah, he's going to play tackle, but not everybody's as gifted as Fasusi. Yeah. You know what I mean? Most of the kids are probably at least going to be swing players, if not guards. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I agree there. So another kid we want to talk about is Trey McNutt. And, and so you know, Brian and I, we talked a little bit before, it sounds like geographically you're a little bit skeptical on this kid and for fair reason, but I'm telling you, I, I um, you know, reading some things, it sounds like he's somewhat interested in Texas a but could that just be, Hey, he's, he's taking his visits. He's feeling it out geographically, you know, obviously Cleveland, Ohio kid. What are your thoughts? What are your thoughts on this kid? Well, first off, in my lifetime, I don't remember them signing a single guy from the state of Ohio. I'm probably wrong, but there's a couple of the things that go along with it. Elko is an Ivy League guy. He's coached in the Midwest, coached at Notre Dame. Um, he's developed a lot of DBs. Like I saw Elko play the Irish last year after he coached because he was at Duke. I was at that game. They're just very sound, and it's going to be easy for him and his staff. It's AM, no offense to Duke. There's no yeah. comparison. He has the ability now to say, I've coached at Wake, Notre Dame, Duke, Texas A&M. He's been all over the place. Just come to Texas A&M. We have the, the facilities. We've got an $18 billion endowment. We'll make it work. So they're, end up, they're going to end up getting some kids. A few years ago, I remember they got Fidelity Diggs yeah. out of like New Jersey or whatever. I'm like, what the hell is A&M doing in New Jersey? Like he was one of the reasons. He's a tremendous recruiter. Mm. He's a likable guy. And he's yeah. produced kids that weren't as highly ranked as Fidel Diggs, I can assure you. Duke had a bunch of two- and three-star players that made plays last year, and they should have beaten Notre Dame the day I was there. And they were a pretty good team. So I just think they're selling what they can do, and he's just giving them a listen. Maybe he knocks it out of the park. Mm -hmm. I don't know. The other thing, to their advantage, and I don't know how they've done this, but Ohio State has arguably the top two corners in the nation committed, and McNutt's like, eh, because almost all the kids from Cleveland want to go to Ohio State. It's yeah. true. So now he's at least going to take a look. And him gets to throw their hat in the ring. Maybe they get him. Maybe they don't. But you you won't win unless you get the young man on campus. Yeah. Exactly. You're right about that. I always say the worst she can say is no, go ask her. You that's, know, that's exactly that's, how I look at it. That's what he that's what we're doing. It's cool. Okay, go for it. Really talented kid. There you go. Um, 
So one more guy I want to talk about, and that is the receiver, Michael Terry. A kid, I can't get a real vibe here. I There's not much of a vibe out there, but, I mean, a talented dude, and, and it seems like Texas A&M has a shot. I don't know how high or low of a shot, but a shot. What are your thoughts on this kid as a player? He has some of the most unique film of anybody in the country. Mm. Very athletic, has the size of a college kid that's played for three years already. Plays running back, plays receiver. They use him on screens. He can take a pass on one side of the field, run across, make guys miss, even though he's like 6'2", 200 pounds or whatever. This is a very talented athlete. Mm. I don't know where I project him for sure. Probably receiver, but I could see him being a strong safety or a running back too. There's a lot of arguments to be made, but as a lot of coaches have taught me, take the best athlete and figure it out later. Mm. Um, I'm going to go out on a limb and guess that A&M staff would love to do that. Like yeah. somebody like Klein will find a way to use him on jet motions, use him as a deep ball guy, red zone target, et cetera, H back, goal line. There's all kinds of ways you can use this kind of player. You're not going to go wrong. So just find a way to get him to commit to your program and develop him from there. Yeah, I'm with you. Now we're going to – Brian does a lot of work with Auburn and, and been at spring practice. So in a minute, we're going to ask Brian some questions knowing how important that football game is for the Aggies this season. We're going to have a little conversation about that coming up right here on Locked on Aggies. But I want to tell you about our friends over at Game Time. Listen, I will never purchase a ticket to anything – Ever again, not on game time. I bought baseball tickets the other day with the game time app. I love the way that you can see where your seat is. I, that is the most convenient feature to an app. I love that. I like when I go to when I go to a ballpark, Brian, I like, you know, I like to try different seats. I always say this. I, I like to to outfield, infield, third baseline, first baseline, field out where I want to be. And you can really get a feel for it with that feature in the game time app. It's great. It makes it easier to know where you want to sit. And we're not just talking about sports tickets. You can go get tickets to country music concert. You can get tickets to, well, any kind of music concert, uh, theater, comedy, whatever you want. Game time has the tickets for you at the best prices. You got to go check them out. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with game time. Download the game time app, create an account, and use code Locked On College for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code L O T E O N L O T E for twenty dollars off. Download the game time app today. Last minute tickets, lowest prices guaranteed. So, Brian, I just I thought this was a perfect opportunity with with you being down there. You're at spring practice every day for the Auburn Tigers, and in this game for Texas A and M. I don't know if you've seen Texas a and schedule, Brian, but it is incredibly manageable. Not easy because it's an SEC schedule, but manageable. All of your tough games, LSU, Missouri, and the Longhorns, you're playing in Kyle Field. Then you play, there's two swing games on this schedule, and it's Florida and Auburn. You play them on the road. You play Auburn late in the year on the road, right the uh, week before the – Lone Star Showdown returns in what should be one of the most anticipated football games in a very long time. But what are your thoughts on this Auburn football team? What have you seen? Should Texas A&M fans feel good about it, or should Texas A&M fans be like, ooh, we're in trouble? The game is at, in Aggieville? No, or, it's in Auburn. That's oh, why it's at Auburn? Game. Okay, well, a couple of things. Number one, nicest people on the planet pretty much live here. It's as easy going as you're going to get. But um, Auburn has a lot of issues. Um, I know – I'm not going to divulge names. I know some players are going to be hitting the portal. Mm. They're very thin at receiver. They don't have a guy at defensive tackle. Like the difference between AM's D line, even with losing the big guy at Ole Miss, is, is still night and day. Um, Auburn's quarterback room is underwhelming until otherwise proven. And part of it's just like the receivers, just not a nice place. They were awful last year. Yeah. Just god awful. Here's the stat of the year for you. I'm at the Iron Bowl last year and I look up at the scoreboard. Everybody's going into halftime. You know how many passing yards Auburn had? 20. <laughs> and they almost won that game. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Freeze is such a good play caller, and they use RPO so well. Mm -hmm. And Alabama just hit a wall. Like, they just they struggled until that ridiculous pass at the end. Yeah, that was great. But Auburn, yeah, they, they completely choked. Auburn doesn't have the talent that they normally do on the D-line. They're desperate for D-line help out of the portal. There's not going to be anybody walking through that door like Walter Nolan, I can assure yeah. you. And they're in trouble. 
if they have any injuries there, or especially their pass rusher, their edge guy, they just don't have backups. By the time they play a and things could have went sideways. I think yeah. Auburn's a 6-6 six and six team. Most of my brethren around the Auburn program think so too. The majority of their best players are freshmen and sophomores. Yeah. That's not how you win in the Southeastern Conference, let alone the Mid-American Conference. So yeah. you have to kind of look at this like whatever they get out of the season is a bonus. Yeah. But same quarterback, Pat, Peyton Thorne, is last year. He's a good player. He's even better than he was last year. But yeah. Fairweather is their only guy that consistently gets open other than Cam Coleman, ironically. He's, he's their best yeah. receiver already. Voldemort. You mean Voldemort. He who shall not be named here on Locked on Aggie. Is what we <laughs> well, I, I got the backstory on that we can talk about sometime. But yeah. Uh, um, but yeah, I mean, that game. So, like, what I'm, what I'm getting at, Brian, is like, take, I mean, seriously, like, I, well, we're, go check out the schedule. You play Notre Dame at home, Texas, Missouri, LSU, all at home. Then you play – That's the home schedule you're going to get for a face. Yeah. <laughs> but think about that. That's your home schedule. Then on the road, you got Mississippi State, South Carolina, Auburn, Florida, and the neutral site with Arkansas. I'm really not concerned about South Carolina, Mississippi State, or Arkansas, to be really honest with you. I'm concerned about playing in the Swamp and in Auburn. If, if you find a way to win those two games and you steal one at home, the schedule – Everyone that you know uh, will tune in. I'll have a Texas fan go, Oh, here we go. Texas AM. Oh, they're going to win this many games a year. Ah, every year we hear it. The schedule is what makes this year so exciting. I don't know. We'll see roster wise. The spring game's coming up. We'll see all that. But I, when you look at this schedule, it is one of the most manageable schedules in college football because all of the difficult games, air quotes difficult, are in Kyle Field. So. It sets up to be easy, and I think the game that isn't at home that I am most worked up about is that Auburn game because I just if Hugh Freeze does figure it out, it'll be late in the year. Now, like you said, they could also be thin at that point, but yeah, Auburn's got some serious issues with depth. Yeah, well, then we'll see. But that's a game. That's a game. If 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 uh, Texas A&M can win that game and win in Gainesville, then a really good first year for Mike Elko is definitely on. What's what is off the top of your head the over under for a and m this fall oh you'll you, you'll you'll find this crazy because it's going to be the same thing that i'm talking about with the whole oh text a and m every damn year we hear eight and a half that's exactly where i would put it mm -hmm. yeah eight and a half and, it, and it's funny because the path to that over is taking care of business against auburn and florida beating the road teams that i'm not as concerned about south carolina mississippi state uh arkansas the neutral site and then beating somebody you aren't supposed to at home you're gonna have four. Four Texas A&M will not lose those all four of those games. They're, they just won't. They will win yeah. one of those games. To where if you take care of business in the games you're supposed to. Now it's college football. That never really happens. But if you take care of business in what you're That's supposed the to, problem. yeah, <laughs> nine wins is on the table. But I, I just I, I think that they're gonna stumble somewhere along the road on you know, on the road. It, although I do think they'll win one they aren't supposed to. But I think eight wins is very much on the table. And if you Something happens. Nine is a possible, you know, a, a, not a high possibility, but a possibility. The line's there for a reason. I always say, you know, Vegas knows what they're doing. So we'll see. But it's going to be um, an interesting, interesting year for the Aggies. But that's going to do it for today's episode of Locked On Aggies and this week here at Locked On Aggies. So thank you all so much for being here every single day. We're going to have a lot of fun stuff coming up with the uh, commitment, hopefully, to Texas A&M from Longstreet and Garcia. That'll be coming up here in the next few days. So everybody have an outstanding weekend. Brian, thanks for being here. Really appreciate it. And uh, we will see you next time.